Now, when he was just 27, Darren Couchman found a swelling in one of his testicles and was diagnosed soon after with testicular cancer. He promised himself that whatever happened, he would raise awareness about this silent killer that affects 2,000 men a year. Well, happily, he was given the all clear and he's now written a book about it and is embarking on his testicular tour of the UK, which we'll, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you in good health. So this is seven years ago and, uh, and you were having a bath. Yes, yes. I mean, I always was very self-aware of uh, aware of che uh, checking myself because I lost my parents to cancer when I was 19. My mum died of breast cancer and my dad of bowel cancer. Um, and I was in a bath, the uh, best place to check yourself yeah. in the bath, uh, and noticed um, an irregularity. You know, the important thing is I was checking myself all the time. You know, and you get to know your testicles and what they feel like. Mm. And if you do find something that's not right below, you notice it straight away. Yeah, you do, like checking your breasts, yes, you know. Yeah. So what did you feel that was irregular? Um, basically, the best way I can describe it was um, I felt the right testicle. And it's like squeezing a, a plum. But as you got to the middle, it's finding like a hard stone in the middle. Mm. Um, and you know that sort of you know panicked me a little bit and thought you know this this wasn't there a couple of days ago when I checked myself and now all of a sudden you know there's a lump so there. That was quick, mm. it was quick as that was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so bearing in mind and you've mentioned your family history and, and said how good you were at checking yourself, I would imagine that you know that of course you, that would have been it out the bath straight down the doctors. But um, that wasn't what you did. Unfortunately not. No. Um, probably like many typical men, um, I fobbed myself off from going to the doctor for about eight weeks for fear of two reasons. One, the embarrassment factor, and two, I was scared of what he would say, yeah. you know, and what the, what what the lump was. what was your wife saying to you? Get down the doctors, mm. there's nothing to worry about. I said, well, I think he's gonna laugh at what I present in front of him. But, you know, that's, again, it's the men's embarrassment factor. Yeah. Um, and she said, look, he must have seen thousands, all different shapes and sizes, he's not gonna laugh at yours, just get down there. You know, and after eight weeks, I, you know, it, it got a little bit bigger, the lump, I was getting pains in the groin here, which is another classic symptom. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll pluck up the courage and go you, down there. You were, um, you went to the GP, you were referred to a urologist, the urologist said there's something not right here. Yeah. And th thank goodness, when, when it was f finally diagnosed, and, and you had the operation, which we'll talk about in a second, just jump ahead, if it had been an aggressive form, where in, in actual fact you were lucky because it was quite slow, yeah. you'd have been done for with that delay. Exactly, yeah, I mean, they, 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 to they told me, Darren, if you'd left it any longer because of your embarrassment, you would be dead, fact, yeah, and you know, this is what I'm trying to do now is promote that mm. message that, you know, men should be more aware of self-checking. Well, particularly if you, you would be leaving a wife and two children. Yeah. And that, you know, you've got to think about your family. Exactly. And just because you were silly, you know, you can't lose your family. No. So the, the operation came about quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, was diagnosed. about a week, about a week after seeing the urologist, he said, I'm getting you in to remove it all. Uh, and then we'll test to see if it's cancerous or not. So when they say remove it all, what do you say? Well, well, how much of everything are you removing? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, removing the uh, the right testicle. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was a little bit sort of shocked, you know, you know, why are you removing the whole lot? Can't you just take the tumour out? But it's not obviously not as simple as that, mm. um, for fear of it spreading, for example, as well. Yes. So they, they got it out, and you said they marked you up quite high onto your abdomen, yeah. and thinking, whoa, how far are you going? Yeah, it was, it was quite funny. I was sitting in the hospital bed, and the surgeons come around, and as, as you know, they mark you up where they're going to make the incision, mm. and they marked me across the groin, and I said, you've got the wrong person here. I'm, I'm here to have my testicle removed. Why are you going in through the groin? Surely the quickest way in is through the, <laughs> the obvious yes, way. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they said, no, so we have to go through the groin because we need to remove some, some tubes and check that it hasn't spread, spread upwards. To the lymph nodes, I suppose, yeah, Dr. Sure. Chris, that sort of thing. That's, well, anyway... That's actually a direction I'd ne had never crossed my mind. No. I'd never even thought that that was the way that you'd go in, is to, because you had to do, do the tubes on the, on the exactly, way through. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I thought I'd be up and about, you know, if they went through the scrotum, I'd yeah. be up and about in a day or so, but they said, no, it's, you know, it's a major operation, you've been cut across the and, groin. And how long did it take you to, to fully recover? Probably about two weeks after I was walking fine again and, you know, you know light jogging, bit of gardening, stuff like that. Yeah, mm. so, but it, it was sore. A pint. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 good, yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> And you were offered a prosthetic testicle, weren't you? I was, yes. But you yes. declined? Yeah, I declined purely because, um, I mean, I was married with two children, um, you know, no one else was going to see it, only the wife, and we, we talked about it, and she said, look, I'm fine with you just having the one, there's no problem. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make any difference, so I just went with, you know, keeping well, you the had, one. you had little Ruby uh, after you'd had the testicle removed, so no problem with fertility afterwards. Exactly, no, no, I mean, I had to bank some before I had chemotherapy, I had one shot of chemotherapy, um, just in case, um, but the, I mean, last year Ruby was born in September, 
uh, you know, and it, and it just dispels the myth that, you know, if, if you've had testicular cancer, you can't have children. It's but that's, so she wasn't born from the, the sperm that you banked? No, natural, natural way, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, which is good news for all men that, you know, that have to go through this. Yeah. She looks fabulous. Yeah. Now, you very bravely have offered yourself as the patient today to have a, a testicular examination and show us how to do it. We did it earlier on. You don't have to no, stand yeah. up and do it now. <laughs> Shall we have a look, Chris, and, and you can talk about it? Yes. There, uh, there is a warning, because obviously you're going to be seeing Darren's naked <laughs> testicles, but, or testicles. Nothing else, just yeah. that. Nothing else. Have a look. Yeah. Um, basically, this, this is Darren actually examining himself. It's not me. And as you can see, he's, he's rolling the, his thumb over the surface of the testicle. And the front of the testicle and the sides of the testicle are smooth. And behind the, the scrotum, you've got the epididymis. It's all very wriggly and complicated. But you're just feeling the front and the sides. And if there's a lump there, uh, it's like a hard swelling on top of this. Mm -hmm. A smooth surface. What's, uh, what, 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 what is this? Well, it's well, well, this fairly is obvious a, what it is. But, yeah, well, uh, the, yeah, well, the, this is just a way of, of, of teaching men you know, how to feel uh, the testicles. And you, you felt that for the first time, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. And you're quite impressed that you can feel the, the swelling. You can feel the tumours, yes. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. yeah. So, um, there, so in, this, in this piece of kit in here, there is a, I did see the instruction kit. Oh, there we go, there it is. The key card. Um, the, uh, the the awareness model and that's that's what they've sort of placed in there so that you can uh, you can find out if you can spot them yes and they yeah. are and they are actually quite quite easy to easy yeah. to spot quite firm, they, so, firm. Well, think, and, and yeah. do you think this is this is accurate yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's a pretty good you know a representation um, I mean basically like Darren said you've got to get to know your own body and yeah. if you're checking yourself regularly you know how they feel you know behind us all wriggly bits that's mm -hmm. not so important to you and he's aware of the front and the sides and he's feeling rowing his, his thumb over the skin and over the testicle and of course it, it it's it's obvious when there's a lump there yeah, isn't it? It is, and yeah. don't be embarrassed to go to your doctor don't be embarrassed at all, you know. Your GP might be a woman. <laughs> so what, you know, she, she's seen it all before. Uh, but, you know, I know it was eight weeks, but uh, at mm. least you, you got there. Yeah. Well, there are some risk factors here. If you, if you, uh, if you are uh, at risk, uh, then this is what, uh, what you should be looking for. Age, of course, that's, uh, that's one of the risk yeah, factors. Yeah, 15 to 44 is the sort of the age group. It's a young man's cancer, an undescended testis at birth. So, you know, the testicles actually descend, you yeah. know, just before birth or after birth. And if one doesn't descend into the scrotum, it can be retained and that could be an increased risk factor for testicular cancer. Um, family history, of course, if it's in the family and then also if you've had testicular cancer yourself before, then you are at, at increased risk. But it's very unusual to get you know, testicular cancer in both testes. And then, yeah, race and ethnicity, it's, um, it's more common in um, Caucasians than non-Caucasians. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, Darren, he, you're not ashamed, you're not embarrassed, not nothing, there's no problem, <laughs> no, not anymore. And you're taking yourself out on tour, you've, you've started actually, you've done four dates. Done four days, yeah. Right, yeah. and um, so the tour is called what? It's called the Testicle Tour. Yes. Um, and we're visiting place names all around England that have reference to the male genitalia, well, shall we say. Well, let's just, because these are places that exist on the map, so they're not rude. You go to Cocking, Bellend, Willey, Peniston, <laughs> Nutsford, Ball, Lower Swell, Cockerham and Old Winkle, among other places. Among others, yes, 66 yes. in total, yes. yeah. And what do you do when you're there? Um, what we do, I mean, um, me, me and my friend Richard that are doing the tour, we, we, um, we have our photo done with a place name with our two large pink testicles. Yes, the two uh, large yeah. pink yeah. testicles yeah. are actually, <laughs> there. There, there you go. They've got, oh, yes, roll them in, Tim, uh, because they are out on the road at the moment. There's, uh, there's one coming through. Lovely. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And uh, so here, uh, here, here, that's the other one. There you go. So you have your photo <laughs> taken, and yeah. then what? And then we basically we talk to men, you know, in these places. So I mean, because the whole point of this tour, I mean, there's two reasons for doing it: is to raise awareness. Uh, to make men more aware of self-checking and not to be embarrassed mm -hmm. uh, and also to uh, raise money for the Every Man Male Cancer Campaign because you know we need to you know we need to get testicular cancer higher on the agenda. Yes, um, as breast cancer is. Exactly, yeah, which, is, which is absolutely right because obviously my mum suffered from it. Yeah, but, but we need all, everything. We need, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean the good thing is when we've been on, on this tour, um, you know, lots of people are giggling, laughing at the car, the, the, the big pink balls, but that the, the combination of humour and the seriousness I think is working mm -hmm. because 
I mean, the other day we was in a town, a group of teenagers come over, laughing and giggling. I mean, they're about 16, which is the prime age. Mm. Um, giggling away. But as soon as I started talking to them and said, look, you know, it's all about testicular cancer awareness, they were asking me questions. Yeah. Yeah. And then I said, look, you know, fact is, I could have been dead, and their faces just changed from laughing to being serious. Mm. Well, we'll put uh, all the details of where you're going uh, on, our, uh, on our website. And well done, and thank, thank you, you for coming yeah. in today. Yeah. And we'll thank you. Cheers. Thank you. What's your book called? You. Uh, one lump or two, a humorous story of one man's fight against <laughs> 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 That's Very the way good. to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Darren. Right, we will see you after the break with the gorgeous Petula Clock. Back in a minute.